Hello, my name is Olivia Meyer, and this is my wire hand project entitled The Thing. I realized early on that I was fascinated with the movement of hand and how only slight changes in motion can change the message. So I was interested in discovering how hands can show emotion and convey messages despite not having a face or a mind of its own. It was just after Halloween when the project was introduced, so I thought what better time to explore this famous character, Thing, from the Adams Family. This hand acts as its own being. It's able to walk and move around using its limbs to show emotion and movement. This inspired me to try and create a hand that could appear to have life in it, despite the fact that it would be remaining stationary. This helped me to come up with some initial main themes. I wanted to focus on form and how it can be manipulated to imitate an animal or creature of sorts. Further into the project, I'll be exploring how I can use shadow to imitate movement. This is my wire hand model accompanied with a quick sketch. The fingers are all in different positions that resemble walking, similar to a spider. Next, we were tasked with translating our 3D wire hand into a 2D format via pencil drawing. The addition of a light source made me realize that my hand had the potential for a very interesting shadow, which I will explore later on. From this, I was able to analyze the hand from a more controlled perspective and was able to see where the points of interest were. This was helpful as we continued to create our own bounding boxes. The investigation of various um, corner designs helped to understand uh, how basswood can be manipulated and used to make a strong frame for our box. I was inspired by previous students' box model to create a box within a box. I also wanted um, the bounding box to resemble a cage. This first box iteration took both of those ideas and meshed them together. Though it was an intriguing and ambitious concept, I felt it looked rather simplistic and did not convey my idea in the way that I had intended. My second iteration strayed away from both those ideas. I was rather taking inspiration from our previous project, which explored um, composition. I focused on how to best display the hand and the bounding box acted merely as a display case. Though my goal with this was met, I felt it strayed too far from my initial inspiration, and so I wanted to create another rendition of a cage. My final box brings back this idea with continuous vertical pieces surrounding the box. The cladding is also cut to resemble bars of a cage or prison cell, though they are still strategically placed to show off the most important parts of the hand. When adding a light source, you can see that there are more vertical pieces behind the cladding than that can be seen as a shadow. From the front, the cladding and vertical bars are shaped to look like they have been broken, which suggests that the hand has been trying to break out. The light source is placed under the hand, which is the position that makes the hand almost unrecognizable, which is supposed to further the idea of acting differently than expected. I continued this theme when creating the site for the bounding box. The space resembles a cage, and the pedestal has legs that are walking out of the cage. Through conceptualizing and creating this hand, I explored how forms can act differently from what is expected. The hand is in a form that, with the help of the extending limbs, makes it appear to be moving on its own. Accompanied by the cage-like bounding box with a broken front side and the contrasting complicated shadows, this hand truly acts as a creature or thing. Thank you for your time.